on location from Beverly Hills, California. Welcome to Dean's Place. Starring Jack Cassidy, Foster Brooks, Vincent Gardenia, Guy Marks, and our new young performers, Ed Bluestone, Jesse Coulter, The Committee, Freddie Fender, Kelly Monteith, Mike Preminger, The Untouchables, and The New Gold Diggers with a special guest appearance by Peter Graves. Got to know what is or isn't mine. If you receive my letter telling you I'd soon be free, then you know just what to do if you still want me. If you still want me, oh, tie a little ribbon around your oak tree. It's been Three long years, do you still want me? If I don't see a ribbon around the old oak tree, well, I'll stay on a bus and forget about us. Put the blame on me. If I don't see a ribbon around the old, old oak tree. Driver, please wait for me Cause I couldn't bear to see what I might see I'm really still in prison And my love, she holds a key A simple yellow ribbon's all I need to set me free I wrote and told her please Get I yellow ribbon It's been three long years Do you still want me If I don't see a ribbon Around the old oak tree Well, I'll stay on the bus Forget about us Put the blame on me If I don't see a ribbon Around the old, old oak tree Ah, the whole damn bus is cheering and I can't believe I see a hundred yellow ribbons around the old, old, old tree. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, that, that's not, you're a good crowd, and I, I'm glad you liked that song, but it wasn't my first choice. I really wanted to sing the haunting love theme from Let's Make a Deal. <laughs> oh, hey, by the way, for all you heavy drinkers here tonight who can't handle it, don't worry. We're the only club in town that accepts Alka-Seltzer credit cards. <laughs> Don Rickles is here. I just saw him in Hollywood walking his rat. <laughs> he just came back from his off-season job. He's a vocal coach for obscene phone callers. <laughs> and Reverend Ike just showed up. He's been at his breathing farm where he's been mating his jacket with Liberace suit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Untouchables. Now, we would like to sing an Italian song. In honor of the great street festival held once a year in New York, the Feast of San Geronimo, we salute. San who? San, uh, San, San Geronimo. Uh, Gennaro. Gennaro. It's pronounced Gennaro, right? 
See, Buddy and I are Italian. Marvin's Jewish. You don't know. No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just do the books. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, won't you please welcome Buddy, our lead singer, to sing for you a very beautiful theme song from the motion picture Jaws. <laughs> Mare come bello, e radonna sentimento. La gente spende il nene, ma spende il suo. Il tuo avvento, casce da. Well, take it back to him, and I'll turn up the air conditioning. Oh, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Excuse me, do do you know me? No, I don't think so. Have you ever seen Have you ever seen me before? No, I haven't. Ah, then how do you know it's me? <laughs> it amusing. Excuse me, sir. You have you have my seat. <laughs> it's a pleasure to introduce Mr. Ed Bluestone. This is uh, my first time in California. I live in New York. Uh, it was a great week for me to get out of New York. I have a lot of bills piling up. My shrink suing me. I'm really down about this. I talked to the guy about everything for three years. Now he has collection agents calling. They know about the dream with the geese. <laughs> it's a rough period for me socially. Yeah, I mean, bad time. Girls I knew in high school have been calling to tell me they still don't like me. <laughs> I attract lunatics. I met a girl out here last night. Wanted me to put toy soldiers on her body and give them orders in German. <laughs> a lot of times I hear problems the whole night. I have big eyes. Women think they come fighting in Bambi. <laughs> Had a day last week. Vassar graduate, super sophisticated. Used to drive with her legs crossed. <laughs> Saw my old girlfriend yesterday, Rhonda the Cruel. It's strange when you haven't seen a girl in a year and she greets you by saying, make it short. <laughs> Rhonda broke up with me on the beach. I let her bury me up to my neck, then she put a pail on my head and ran away. <laughs> Breakups are rough with me. I have no pride. I offer to stay on as a gardener. <laughs> Get depressed and start eating out alone. I always do that when a love affair ends. I go to restaurants we used to go to. Try and relive everything for half the price. <laughs> I hear 
lonely in the building I live in. I'm the youngest person in my building. We have women in their 80s, so I feel no rapport with. I always start conversations the wrong way. You can't say, did you know Wild Bill Hickok? <laughs> Were you fooled by the Trojan horse? <laughs> I had a great scene the other day. I'm in the elevator with Mrs. Stein, who's totally senile, makes jewelry out of whitefish heads. <laughs> Doctors out of hand. Uh, doctors are generally cheap. My guy's ridiculous. How many doctors have one tongue depressor? <laughs> now there's a new thing. He's cutting back on syringes. I needed a blood test. He hands me a leech and says, bring it back Thursday. <laughs> this guy gives up on anything. I just sore throat for a week once. He started talking about mercy killing. <laughs> Went in another time. Pinched nerve in my neck. Tells me possibly he can replace my neck with a slinky. <laughs> and he says, if I pull this off, make sure you keep your head back when you walk downstairs. <laughs> what kind of doctor has a sign in his office that says, death need not mean the end of your financial obligations. <laughs> Hey there. This is my daughter, Claudia. Hello, nice to meet you. Hi. Oh, nice to meet you. Hey, now that's a pretty name, Claudia. I have a daughter named Claudia. Hi, did you enjoy your dinner? Uh, it was great. I'd like to pay my compliments to the chef. Well, go right ahead. The kitchen's right there. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'll sit here with Claudia. Claudia, come to... I don't mean to interrupt your work, but I wanted to give my compliments to the chef. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's him. You. You where? Right there. Oh, oh! Imagine me cooking for you. You're, you're. Wait, 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 wait. I know it. I know you like I know the back of my hand. Your name. Your name is right on the tip of my nose. Well, sure. My name is. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I know it so well. I never miss your show. Oh, the way you move in and fight crime and injustice. Now you've got it. And you're always sucking a lollipop. <laughs> Yeah, you just lost. Oh, I know you. I know, I know you. You're famous. Yeah, everywhere but in this kitchen. Maybe this will help. My name is Peter Graves. No. Phelps! You're Phelps from Mission Impossible. Oh. I don't believe it. Believe it. Oh. Now, I'm going to get back to my table, but I just wanted to thank you for a delicious meal. Oh, oh, oh you like my food? You really like my food? Here. Huh? Here. Bill Manicotti, lasagna. What am I going to do with this? Is this all for me? Yes, except for the pasta fazula. That goes to table number 10. Hurry up. Hurry up before it gets cold. Rose, rose, rose. I love me. I love me not. I love... Is there something I may do for you, milady? No, I was just admiring you. You are good looking. You're right. Of course, good looks aren't everything. They're not? Oh, no, I've always believed a man should have character. A good, strong character. I mean, wouldn't you rather have a good, strong character than to be good-looking? <laughs> well? Well, I think you have character. It shows in those little character lines around your mouth. What lines? <laughs> you can just barely see them, but they're there, and they'll get deeper before long. Isn't that nice? Just imagine a face full of character. And lines. <laughs> I really envy you. To be a man to be able to age so gracefully. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse me, I have to go see about one of my customers. Or oh, the look. <laughs> Hi, kid. Kid. A lot you know. <laughs> Here's a chance to enjoy some great country music and brush up on your Spanish at the same time. Mr. Freddie Fender. If it brings you happiness, then I wish you both the best. It's your happiness that matters most of all. But if he ever breaks your heart, if the teardrop ever starts, I'll be there before the next teardrop falls. Si te quieres de verdad y te da felicidad. 
pensar Te deseo lo más bueno a los dos Pero si te hace llorar A mí me puede hablar Y estaré contigo cuando triste estás I'll be there anytime you need me by your side to dry away every teardrop that you cry. And if he ever leaves you blue, just remember I love you. And I'll be there before the next teardrop falls. And I'll be there before the next teardrop falls. I love the way you uh, picked the guitar there. Thank you very much, Dean. I picked the guitar for a long time. Uh, I've also picked tomatoes and uh, cotton, <laughs> pickles. And if I ever get a gig in Las Vegas, I'm going to pick a good number for you. <laughs> I've seen some numbers in Las Vegas that look like they've been pretty picked over already. Yeah. <laughs> but tell me, how did you get started, Freddie? Well, uh, my original name is uh, Baldemar Garza Huerta. Valdemar Garza Huerta, which would be an excellent name in Mexico, of course, but I changed it to Freddy Fender so the gringos could put some more dimes in the jukebox. <laughs> so when did you start playing? Well, I started pulling around... Uh... Oh, you mean the guitar? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, when I was young, my mother bought me a guitar, and uh, she always bought me a guitar. I grew older, I got into a little bit of trouble. She wouldn't buy me a guitar anymore. So I bought myself a banjo. Banjo? A banjo. <laughs> oh, you mean a banjo? Yeah, I can play that one, too. <laughs> <laughs> then you became a big country star and played around a lot. Uh, no, no, I don't play around anymore. Uh, that's not my mesa. Ah, not your mesa. No, no table, table, table. Uh, table, that's it. <laughs> Suppose you and Tony are banjo and we cantare. We'll sing a song. Sing a song. South of the border, down Mexico way. That's where I fell in love when stars above came out to play. And now as I wonder, my thoughts ever stray. South of the border, down Mexico way. It happened in Monterrey a long time ago. I met her in Monterey in old Mexico. Stars and steel guitars and luscious lips as red as wine broke somebody's heart. It was mine When a little Spanish town Was on a night like this The stars were peek a and down Was on a night like this Le dije Quiere mi a mi And she sighed And it was fiesta And we were so gay South of the border Down Mexico way Ay, 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 ay Ay, ay, ay 
south of the border, down Mexico way. You know, uh, young comics are popping up all over these days, and nothing gives me more pleasure than passing one on to you. He started writing for other comedians, then performed in small clubs with a partner. <laughs> well, anyway, his partner retired from show business, too. <laughs> but uh, he went on by himself. Now, really, it's a pleasure to present him to you tonight, Mr. Kelly Monteith. Thank you for that uh, nice introduction. Nice to be here at uh, Dean's place. My name is Kelly Monteith. I always repeat my name when I come on stage just to kind of, uh, kind of assert my identity a little bit. Because I travel a lot and I find that being on the road, I lose my identity. Because most of the people I meet, I don't meet them on a personal basis. Most of the people I meet just, uh, they identify me with their work. You know? I stay in hotels and hotel maids, they don't know me as Kelly Monteith. To a hotel maid, I'm a room number. That's how they identify me. They'll see me in a hall. Aren't you 1214? <laughs> what? 1214. You're 1214, aren't you? Yeah, that's me, 1214. That's my identity when I'm in a hotel. That's why I have this terrible fear of dying in a hotel room and being buried as a room number. <laughs> see it under my tombstone. Here lies 1214. Sanitize for your protection. <laughs> It's the same in restaurants. I eat owl all the time. And waitresses, they don't know me as Kelly Monteith. To a waitress, I'm a food order. Because, see, that's how waitresses identify people. You probably had them do that, too. You'd be at a coffee shop or something. they come up to the table. Peel Parmesan. Liver and onions. <laughs> and people at the table do the same thing. They go, no, I'm liver and onions. This is veal Parmesan. <laughs> and this is chopped steak, and that's tomato surprise. <laughs> Every time I'm on television, I know there's some waitress in Alabama watching me going, oh! I know him. That's scrambled eggs, bacon, and no grits. Because <laughs> so much of what I say and do is habitual. For instance, when I greet people, I find myself using one basic greeting over and over. You know. Hi, how are you? You should get the same answer. Fine, how are you? Fine, thank you. Now, that's a little exchange that said so much that people don't even hear one another. You can say anything to them. Hi, how are you? Up your nose. Fine, thank you. <laughs> Because they're not listening, see? They just respond conditionally. I think thank you, that's a perfect example of that. Thank you. How many times a day do you hear those two words? Thank you. How many times a day do you say them? Thank you. You can't thank somebody without being thanked back. Thank you. Thank you, too. <laughs> it's getting to the point that I hate to pay a check at a restaurant anymore. I go through an orgy of thank yous with the cashier. Enjoy your meal, sir. Yes, thank you. It's very good. Well, thank you. Here's your change now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Have a nice day. Well, thanks. You too. Well, thank you. <laughs> I walk out a door that says, thank you. It's automatic. People say it without even thinking. You're fired. Thank you. <laughs> we just say it because it was drilled into us to say it. We taught that. Say thank you. Say pardon me. Say excuse me. Those are two more that were drilled into us. Pardon me. Excuse me. We use those all day long. I've excused myself to walls. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> Wall. Me. I've had people step on my foot, crush on my toes, and I'll say, excuse me. Huh? Oh, excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and then I'll go home and I'll be all by myself and I'll burp. Excuse me. <laughs> and when I realize I'm alone, I go, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry for it. See, it's a guilt response coupled with that. I feel guilty about a lot of things that I have absolutely no reason to feel guilty about. Passing a hitchhiker, perfect example. I'll feel so guilty about that, especially if the guy glares at me when I go by. <laughs> now, I'll feel so guilty about passing him that I find myself making excuses in sign language. I'm turning at the next corner! <laughs> Just another way of saying, excuse me. And then I'll look in the mirror and I'll see him give me his reply. <laughs> which is also in sign language. <laughs> Worry about a thing, Judge. I shall talk to the chef personally. 
Buonasera, Vincenzo. Mi ha una very special order that I wish you to prepare this evening. Get out. I told you I never want to see in this kitchen again. Always coming in here and telling me how to prepare my meals. Out. 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 Please. Now, this is what I'd like. I would like food of all, braise of Bordeaux, the calves liver should be very young and sliced no thicker than a quarter of an inch. Yes. I'm not listening. <laughs> the white onion should be sautéed to a golden brown. I won't listen. <laughs> As for the potato... I can't hear you. <laughs> Toes. They should be well browned. Uh, I've got you. I don't ever fool around with the master. <laughs> we'll see about that. One regular order of liver and onions and burn the spots. <laughs> a few years ago, I presented a summer show called The Gold Diggers. It featured a bunch of shapely young girls who sang and danced, and they became so popular with TV viewers, so uh, I brought them here tonight, my beautiful girls, the Gold Diggers. that much in one night. Oh, it's yours. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the committee. <gasps> oh, hello. Hello. Welcome to Tweed's Tailor Shop. May I help you? Well, I've come to have a shoot made for a friend's funeral. Oh, uh, 
I'm sorry. Oh, I'll go somewhere else then. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I mean, I, I, I'm sorry about your friend. Oh. Uh, I'd like to help you. What would you like? A suit, a suit. Well, let me take your measurements, yes. Well, this won't and do you a lot of good, you oh, know. Oh, we know what we're doing here, sir. Have no fear. Now, what kind of suit did you have in mind? Well, I had in mind a suit for my friend who's dead. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, then uh, this won't do me any good. No, I really. said that. I said that. Oh, well, I, you see, I, I will need your friend's measurements. Look, he's about this tall, shoulders are about like this, his hips are like this, and he tapers to the ground. I appreciate that, <laughs> I, I will need his measurements in inches oh. and things to get it exact. I'll bring him in. Fine. <laughs> this is John. John's dead. Oh, hello. <laughs> You know, he's stuffed with sawdust and old newspapers. Oh, he's stuffed? I did it myself. I'm an amateur taxidermist. Oh, and a know? very good one. <laughs> well, I found him laying there dead. I said, why let it go to waste, I said. Oh, why indeed? As I'd finished with the raccoon, I thought it was time to take the next step up. Oh. <laughs> well, why don't we just lay him down? Sure. And then, uh, oh, no, not there, please. Let's just put him on the chairs there. Oh. There we go. I'll give you a hand. <laughs> you think he's comfortable? Oh, fine. Good, all right. Now, what kind of suit did you have in mind? Well, what I color, thought a black example? suit like everyone has. Oh, everyone is not very, excuse me, in black. <laughs> no, by no means. Why, just last week I buried a woman in pink organza. It was the most... You don't excuse me. You're breaking. Oh, I'm sorry. His spine is made of old coat hangers, you know. They'll oh, bend on you. That's too bad. He's quite comfortable. Well, yeah. Here, let's take him down. Now, let me show you the fabrics. I have here a blue, a green, a brown. Oh, he likes that one. Yes. He's crazy about that one. Very well, it's brown. Yeah. Then. You learn to read his moods after a while. Then. <laughs> I imagine you do. Well, now, when would you like this suit, sir? As soon as possible. Well, next week, perhaps. If you'd like Fine. to leave him here, then I can work on him here. Well, he has no appointments this week. <laughs> you won't be in your way just oh, off no. in the corner. Oh, no, no, no. Just put him here on the chair in the oh, light. Right. That's right. <laughs> Very good. Excuse me. Yes. Do you have a book of matches I could borrow? Oh, no. <laughs> Please don't smoke in the shop. We neither of us smoke. <laughs> There's a new sound coming out of country, and the lady who's making it adds a little soul, a little rock, and a little blues. I don't know what they call it, but I call it beautiful. And the lady who writes it and plays it and sings it is just that, beautiful. My very special guest, Miss Jessie Coulter. What's happened to blue eyes? Has anyone? That he gave up on me I'm looking for blue eyes Has anyone known him? Is anyone knowing If he's been looking for me There was a time Blue eyes said he loved And on the love he swore I'd be. There was a time when he had blue eyes so clearer than my mind. Tears and rain, years of pain, bring me back. What's happened to blue eyes? Has anyone seen him? Don't anyone tell that he gave up on me. I'm looking for blue eyes. I'm looking for blue eyes. 
place. Yes, this is Jacques, the maitre d'. Sure. Yes, we can make a reservation for you and your husband. All right, if you insist. Separate tables. <laughs> Near the exit? Excuse me, pal, do you, do you mind if I keep this glass? Why, do you want it for a souvenir? No, I'm going to put, put that under my pillow tonight and wait for the boo. Wait for the boo, boo's fairy. <laughs> Mr. Martin, our customer says there's a fly in his soup. What's he want for a buck, a hummingbird? <laughs> ah, here you are, Mr. Martin. I brought you some nice pasta, made especially for you. You've been working so hard, I want you just to relax and eat. All right. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Let me help you with the napkin. Huh? Sure. Uh, uh, there. Ah. <laughs> uh, wait, 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 wait. Let's make sure it's just perfect. Yeah, let's do that. Uh-huh. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Needs a little more cheese. A little more cheese. Mm-hmm. Ah. Mr. Martin, there's something I'd like to talk to you about. Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. Mm. It needs a little more cheese. More cheese. <laughs> Come on. Uh. When I leave here a couple of years from now, I'd like to open up my own restaurant. And I thought that maybe you could lend me the money, huh? Oh, sure, sure. sure. You know, I like a small place. Completely Italian. The best of food. No liquor. No liquor. Mm-hmm. Hey, you, you almost lost your backing there. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, I'm right, of course. And I was thinking maybe dining al fresco, an outside patio. Oh, that right? sounds good. And if the customer doesn't pay the check, you can throw him inside. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like yeah. that, Mr. Martin. Yeah, Very good. That's the big, Just big think. Hunt Just think. Mm -hmm. Check the tablecloths. Candles in each wine bottle. Mm. A place where good friends could meet and eat. Eat pasta like this. <laughs> I think it needs a little more cheese. You know, I think you're right. Yeah. It's a place that is comfortable. Yeah. And maybe have a nice glass of wine with the old paisano, eh? Mmm. Oh. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Ah. Salute. 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 Mm. Ah. <laughs> and maybe sing a little Italian song, eh? Huh? Vicino mare, facimo amore, accor, accor, baciash passare. You made this for me, didn't you? So mare, mare, e ti dare sia palla. Salute, I know. bello, Mr. Martin. Eat, eat, enjoy. I don't need any more cheese. <laughs> I am woman, I am woman, 
Somebody over there at that table just asked me, where do you find those bright young comedians you're always presenting? The answer is all over the country. We found this next young man who was breaking it up in a little club in New York called Catch a Rising Star, and we agree, he is a rising star. He's here tonight, Mike Preminger. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. I, uh, I'm a former page at NBC. That was one of the jobs I had there. And uh, so I've been, I've been running around in L.A., and as a former page, I've been hearing some of the rumors about the new shows that are going to be on TV. Raymond Burr has another show starting very soon, plays a guy who can't sit down. <laughs> I, I grew up watching television. You know, I just, I love everything. A lot of sports. I love when those ball players come out to show how masculine they are. Like in football, Dick Butkus comes out, does a commercial. He says, I'm Dick Butkus at the Chicago Bears, and I'm tough. I'm tough. Took him a while to memorize that. <laughs> I'm tough. I'm going to shave, and I'm not going to use any water. I'm not even going to use a blade. I'm going to pull the heads out of my face. <laughs> And I watch basketball sometimes, like the announcer says, Walt Fraser is a great basketball player, despite the fact that he's very short. He's only six foot four. Now, what does that make us, Raisinets? <laughs> My favorite athlete the last few years, Secretariat. Great horse. Did you see him on the NBC Game of the Week, guest announcer? <laughs> little hat on, his four legs crossed, smoking a jockey. <laughs> they retired this beautiful animal at the old age of three, put him in a barn, and for six million dollars, he breeds little baby horses. They should do that with real people. <laughs> when Henry Aaron retires from baseball, put him in a barn, make little outfielders, it would be great. <laughs> True, animals always had a, a much better social life than us people, right? Like the bull. They bring the cows into the field a couple of times a year. The bull never had to get on the phone. <laughs> what are you doing Saturday night? You want to see a movie? We'll play some records. They don't do that. It's like, you ever watch little dogs on the street? They meet and that's it. You never heard a dog bark at another one and go, what sign are you? <laughs> and I found out that's the best way to meet someone in a big city, by a dog. Because we're afraid to go up to strangers. But if you have a dog, you could be standing in the middle of traffic, stark naked with your leg on fire and a corn muffin in your ear. And people go, what kind of dog is that? <laughs> I was with this pretty girl, and she had a lapsus abscess, one of those dogs, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. A lapso with the, yeah, and I'm next to her, and I know by now that I'm not Robert Redford. I know that, but I ain't a Fig Newton. <laughs> and another girl came along. She said, I have a dog like that. Do you want a mate? I said, yes. <laughs> said, do you have papers? Now, luckily, I had just bought the New York Times. <laughs> I was with this girl a few weeks ago. In the middle of the evening, she looked at me and told me to go to a sex clinic. Yeah, said I should ask for the emergency room. <laughs> See, when I was a kid, girls would come up and say, you look just like a teddy bear. You ever get one of those? I was with a girl. She didn't say anything about a teddy bear. Took me home, turned off the lights, and then she made me sit up by her pillow all night. <laughs> I said, I'm not a teddy bear. And she gave me a big hug and a squeeze, and my eye popped out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Excuse, excuse me, could you tell me how to get, get to the bar? Yeah, sure, you... We're at the bar. Oh, that was a short trip. Bartender, would you please give, give me something to ste steady my hand? Sure thing. Here you are. Thanks. Is that all? No, 
you better let me have one, one more and one, one from my friend here. Mm -hmm. Here, aren't you Gene Martin? Well, I better be, or I helped a stranger into his underwear this morning. <laughs> Sorry, I'm awfully nervous. It's the, it's the work I do. Yeah, well, what's your job? I'm a, I'm a member of the police. Police bomb, bomb squad. I handle, I handle dangerous and un, unpredictable high, high explosives all day. The name is KB. KB Henderson. Oh. What does the uh, KB stand for? Kaboom! <laughs> I tell you, the pressure is extra. Ex you ought to see the pressure I'm under. You, if you, have you ever had the, the palms of your hands cold from perspiration and the, that queasy feeling in the pit of your stomach and, and your head, head pounding every morning? <laughs> you know, your work sounds pretty dangerous. Do you have any, uh, any kind of protection? Oh. Oh, sure, I, I, I wear big, a big mask with li little slits for, for the eyes and a lead shield from head, head to toe. Well, uh, and big, thick, great big, thick asbestos gloves. Oh. Well, what's the most difficult part of the job? Figuring out what to do in the men's room. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Um, 